All right, what's up everybody? Brian Tong here. Let's just jump right into this because this is gonna be uh, my impressions and all new information about using the Apple Vision Pro for the fourth time. I've been lucky enough to check it out four times. This is the first time Apple also actually took photos of us wearing the headset and you can see that here. To me, there are really three things that they were focusing on. One was spatial computing this time around, which we really haven't seen as much. The second one was immersive video. And if there's one way to describe this headset as they've continued to show more and more demos, it is immersive. There is nothing like it out there on the market when it comes to um, immersion, and we'll, we'll get into all that. And the third big thing that I saw for the very first time, eyesight. That is that feature where you can see, uh, someone from the outside can see your eyes, can see your facial expressions through that front visor of the Apple Vision Pro. So we're gonna talk about what I learned there as well. And just to let you know, in the sessions that I've used it, uh, the very first time was the only time I used it with both the solo knit band, which is the standard band that goes around uh, the backside, and then the dual loop band that goes on top. That was only used on my first session. Ever since then, my past three sessions have only used the solo knit band. Uh, and then from that time when I've asked them about just the hardware itself, the past three times, the hardware I have been told has been the same. So, you know, all my impressions about the weight and the feel and the comfort, that has stayed pretty much consistent throughout all these. So let's get into really what the Apple Vision Pro uh, demo showed off this time. And I do have notes that I'm gonna refer to because I wanna throw out as much information to you as possible. And if you looked at my other videos and you wanna go back and refer to them, I've covered everything from a spatial video to the user interface to uh, new features, some of the new apps. You can dig in there, but these are, like I said, this one's video is gonna focus on spatial computing, uh, the immersive video aspects with 3D video, and then eyesight. Okay, so, First of all, let's talk about spatial computing and some of the apps that they had me use. We were able to use you know, the Photos app, which they've, they've kind of showcased to warm things up, how to navigate, slide up and down, pinch and zoom, increase the size of the window. The, all those information and details are in my previous videos, but what we finally gotta do is really play around with multiple apps in a space for spatial computing. Now, the one, main thing that I wanna say here is we used some of the more, um, I guess, and I don't wanna call them entry level apps, but basic Apple apps. It was like the Photos app, it was Safari, um, it was another one, it was like web browsing, um, you know, notes and things like that. I was able to place them in different spots, but there, have, there were no, let's say like content creation type apps uh, from a standpoint of like word processing or Adobe or even some of Apple's own creation apps like iMovie or GarageBand. I have not seen any of that in action so far. I don't think anyone else has, but this was at least to give us an idea of how spatial computing works, how you can move windows in different places. And what I found that was really interesting is with spatial computing, um, I could move an app, right? Place one here, place one in the center, place on the right, so you have three apps here. But I could also take an app and go all the way behind me and plop an app just behind my body. So essentially in this entire space, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could pop up multiple apps and multiple windows and place them in here. Another thing that was interesting is that based on your location, like how I'm sitting or standing, if I place an app really, like really high up, it wouldn't stay, f it wouldn't stay like kind of flat to a wall and, and so I'd have to look at awkwardly. It would actually angle that app towards where my head position is when I place it. So instead of me, you know, if I look up here, it's already, instead of it just being like on a flat wall, it's already angled a little bit. So it's more comfortable to look at if it's in a higher position. Now, if it's dead center at my eye level, the app will be placed flat. So there's subtle things about how you place those apps in different places. Another thing is I did get to use the Safari web browser and a cool thing, there's a new feature specifically for Apple Vision Pro and it's called Look to Dictate. And we know that you can use Siri commands on the Apple Vision Pro and I'll talk about that in a moment, but Look to di Dictate specifically if you look at your browser bar uh, and on the left side of it, there's a little icon. And if I stare into it, then it automatically prompts me to say something in it. So instead of you having to pull up the keyboard, which I've used in a previous uh, session and I used today also, you sure, you can use the keyboard and type in characters, but if you look to dictate, you look at this icon on the left side of the, of the general uh, search bar or the input bar where you type in your URL, and you stare at it for a moment, and then instead of typing anything, I can just say something like ebay.com, and it'll directly take you to that site or do a search. So I thought that was a really slick 
UI, UX type feature in Safari that is nowhere else except for the Apple Vision Pro. And it makes sense because this is a, you know, interactive type thing. You don't, quite honestly, I don't find myself being the type of person who's going to be pecking away using the virtual keyboard. I'll either be using a physical keyboard in front of me or uh, look to dictate will be a feature that um, would I assume would appear in more than just Safari and potentially other apps, but really key and really good. Now, I talked about also the apps that are available. There's gonna be native apps uh, for Apple Vision Pro that will appear on that home screen interface. You just tap the digital crown and let's call it like the home or the home screen appears with those circular apps. Native Apple Vision Pro apps will appear on there and then if you you know swipe to the next page, similar to iOS, uh, you'll see more icons. But there's a folder there called Compatible Apps Folder and these are apps that are on iOS and iPadOS that work with Apple Vision Pro but aren't natively made for Apple Vision Pro. So that will obviously allow a library of more apps available. I think Apple said there's roughly around 1 million apps that'll be available on launch. Some of those will be native and some of those will be uh, compatible apps that will rest in that folder. Also, I interacted with Siri a little bit. There was so much to show show me, but you know, I could say things like um, magic word Siri, close all my apps, and in that spatial computing space, all of a sudden everything goes doo -doo -doo. I could use it to open Safari, open specific apps. I didn't get too deep into it, but Siri works as expected. And from a standpoint of if you're in spatial computing, I could see obviously closing certain apps, closing certain windows, but I didn't go deep into everything that Siri could do, but it did work. And a little like three dimensional glowing Siri uh, ball, or I don't know what to call it, right? That, that Siri icon that is kind of organic would appear on screen, just like right down here for me to see. And I almost wanted to reach reach out and touch it, but it Siri obviously works and is part of the overall experience with Apple Vision Pro. Okay, then I gotta jump into some apps. I gotta use the Keynote app. And they really wanted me to use Keynote to show how it worked and how, again, I talk about how immersive this headset is. Well, Keynote, it looked like all the features to build a Keynote are there. I did not build any type of Keynote. It was already preset. But what there is is, on up on the top banner of the app itself, there's a uh, there's an option called rehearse slideshow. So you look at it right with your eyes, you pinch to select it, and then it gives you a couple options whether it's conference or theater. So I first hit conference, and all of a sudden, complete completely around me, I'm tele basically almost teleported into a conference room, and then I turn back here, and my slideshow is as if it's on like a large screen and I'm standing in a room. It was a slideshow about surfboards. And so I could, you know, pinch to slide towards me to go to the next slide, go forward to kind of get back to the previous slide. But you're, you're in like a virtual conference room, super high fidelity, high quality. You know, this is, we're getting 4K streams into our eyes from the uh, Apple Vision Pro. But when you talk about like, you know, it's to practice it. I'm like, okay, that was kind of immersive. Then, I changed the option to theater. And I didn't, I just thought, oh, this is gonna be any other theater. They plopped me into Steve Jobs Theater. So basically, I was looking out at those brown leather seats that they have as if I was Tim Cook on stage. And then another cool feature was that in addition to this, let's call it keynote uh, rehearsal environment, I could also choose to have the lights on or lights up or lights down, so it was either dark and moody or bright. And I was like, wow, and it looked it looked so good. So when I talk about just how immersive this headset is, this is one of those really immersive experiences. I also got to try out a third-party app that was built natively for the Apple Vision Pro called JigSpace. And this is, uh, think of this as like an interactive 3D presentation app where you can upload your own 3D models or CAD files and then present them. You can manipulate them. I used both fingers and held them and then pinched and then rotated uh, an Alfa Romero C43 car. I got to actually position it so it looked like I was sitting in the cockpit. You could pull the different pieces of it because it's a 3D model for learning and education. I could pull like the fender, I could pull the wheel off. So it was just showing how interactive this could be. Again, we didn't go super deep into these apps, but it's an example of the types of things that you could do, but I could manipulate objects in 3D space. Um, so that was cool. I also did see the, uh, I guess it's, how do I call it? It's like a interactive 
coloring slash pattern slash puzzle game. You might've heard of it called Stitch that's available on iOS. The Stitch icon was one of those native apps. We didn't get a jump into it, but I'm just letting all you Stitch fans know uh, that puzzle coloring, I don't wanna call it coloring, but that interactive game is available and it'll be a native app um, on Apple Vision Pro. So my impressions overall spatial computing, again, I didn't get to use any real and spend major time with creative apps. I don't know how much I'll be using spatial computing at the moment. I have to really see more and find out which apps make sense, but I could, I could find myself enjoying messages and Safari and in, in kind of in my living room, I could see myself using that sometimes. I, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna use it all the time and I'm not gonna say I'm gonna use it for hours, but at least being able to interact and get an idea, a better idea of how spatial computing works with Apple Vision Pro, um, that, was, that was a cool experience. So we got all that. Let's continue on to this immersive theme with um, watching movies, okay? So finally, Apple Vision Pro, you know, Apple did launch with Apple Immersive Video, but I got to see some of these movies. They just recently announced that I believe there will be 150 movie titles that are in 3D that are available on Apple Vision Pro on launch. So I got to check out Super Mario Brothers in 3D. Uh, what the way looking at it, it, it looked like the movie itself was um, was shot or made at 24 frames per second. I could be wrong here, but it looked like it was 24 frames um, or shot at that and produced it that way. It was fun, it was cool to see um, just a 3D movie. I wanna quite honestly see more material, but that was a demo they gave and you can bring the screen up to you so you, you kinda feel like you're really, like you're almost like head first right into the film, but 3D immersive movies with spatial audio, already very cool. Now what's cool thing is though is, you know, you have the digital crown on the top and when you turn the digital crown, Right, that allows you to bring in an environment. And I've talked about environments in the past. They've had like um, Mount Hood, they've had the moon, they've had uh, Haleakala in Hawaii. And so I turned that digital crown and the background filled out while I was watching that movie into a dark night scene. But another thing that I found out, which I haven't didn't know before is when you turn that digital crown, you'll see an environment icon on the top right but also right next to it is a volume icon. So what you'll do is, you know, you can turn that digital crown just to fill out the entire space around you in an environment, but if you wanna change the volume of the movie you're watching, you just obviously stare at the volume icon um, and then turn it and then it'll change the volume level as well. So that allows you to access two different things specifically um, when you're watching movies. Now, I'm just gonna be curious to see, the demos that I've had have been around 30 to 45 minutes. And I will tell you, and I've said this in every demo, I do start feeling the weight. Um, earlier on, I felt it more around 10 to 15 minutes. I think maybe I'm getting used to it a little more, but still, it is not a light headset. Um, the weight you do feel, and I just, I still just don't know if I can really get through even an hour of watching a movie straight, let alone two hours, which is a full movie. Maybe I might have to take a rest in between, um, but after my session, which was about, yeah, I would say about more like 40 minutes, I didn't have anything like a, a VR headset face where you have like lines or impressions, but you do feel the weight, and I'm never gonna like pretend like that's not an aspect of it. It is, they say it's about one pound, I don't know the exact weight. It's not light, it's not super heavy, but I would lean towards, if I'm saying if it's like middle weight or a little heavy, I, I'd wait till towards it's a little heavier. So that is something that uh, we're gonna have to kind of, that's why we're gonna do a review and just, I'm gonna really find out how long I can watch and try it multiple times before, for me, it, it, it bothers, the weight bothers me. But I think in a way, looking at how it's designed, maybe people with smaller heads might feel the weight more because someone with a larger, a larger dome, that weight, that that headband will be able to kind of pull more around their head, and it might help distribute the weight a little better. So um, again, we'll have to see how those, you know, how the solo knit band and the dual loop band come into play over that. Now, a new app that was just announced on the day that I got to try this demo out was Disney Plus, and guess what? I got to try the Disney Plus app, and Disney Plus also is bringing 3D 3D movies. There's an all new 3D section. If you look on the left-hand column, it looks like a, kind of like a, down on the bottom of the left-hand column, it looks like a triple stack. And when you gate, when you look at it 
I believe it says 3D, but this some of the titles that are going to be available on launch in 3D on Disney Plus include Avatar Way of Water, Avengers Endgame, Star Wars The Force Awakens, Elemental, and Encanto. They, they said they're launching with dozens. Those are the ones that they at least told us. Um, I didn't get to navigate through that a whole bunch, but there will be others announced at a later time. But Disney Plus bring in 3D movies to the table. And not just 3Ds, I'm just gonna read off some specs about this. These are gonna be Dolby Vision ready movies with multi-view, high efficiency video coding. So they're essentially re-encoding these movies at Dolby Vision 4K, support for HDR, independent streams for each eye that they, so they basically re-encoded this just for the Disney Plus service and just for the Apple Vision Pro. Also, um, the frame rate, is gonna also support high frame rate. So a movie, what, what movie supports high frame rate? Well, you already know, Avatar Way of Water um, bounces between 24 frames and 48 frames per second. And depending on how you like, some people liked it, some people didn't. I thought it worked really well at 48 frames per second in the water scenes where it looked more flowy, but sometimes the director's choice, it, it was jarring. Times where like, it felt like in the same scene, it bounced between 24 and 48, but ultimately, Apple Vision Pro will support the director's original intent with high frame rate support as well. So these 3D movies on Disney Plus are, are gonna be quite honestly spectacular. You also have, we talked about those environments like Haleakala and Mount Hood. Well, Apple is also offering a developer tool for apps themselves to make environments in their own apps. And the Disney Plus app did just this. So again, on the left side, there's an environments option, and there are four options that they have. One is El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. Another is the scare floor of Pixar's Monster Inc. You also have Marvel's Avengers Tower that's overlooking downtown Manhattan. I got to jump into that. There was like a Hulkbuster on one side, and then all of the uh, Iron Man costumes, you know, Mark One, Mark Two, and more. They were kind of on the right side of me, but you're watching the movie. In the space, the, the other one they showed me, which is kind of fun, is Star Wars on Tatooine. You're actually in, like, sitting in a land speeder, and then you have the dual, um, the 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 sun, the sunsets, right? The binary sunset in the background, and you're sitting in a land speeder watching a movie. And these environments are fun. Developers will be able to use this um, depending on the types of apps. So, guess what? Uh, Disney Plus won't be the the last one, but it was fun to experience this. And I I know some of you might say like, oh, this sounds gimmicky, but it it adds charm. There is something to it, and I'm just gonna tell you these environments make help transport you to other places, and that's why I keep on saying like this is such an immersive device, unlike any other, and the fidelity is so incredible. Okay, the other thing they showed us is a new sizzle reel for Apple immersive video. So there's gonna be content that launches with this headset that Apple just announced. They showed us a sizzle reel, a variety of these things. One of them will be Alicia Keys' rehearsal room. She'll be performing songs like, No One, If I Ain't Got You, Oh My Gosh. That's gonna be, and it's recorded in, okay, 8K, 180 degree field of view, in 3D with spatial video. These are extremely immersive and intimate uh, the sizzle reel showed all, all that. So Alicia Keys rehearsal room is one of the features. There's also another one called Adventure and it features Highliner Faith Dickey. She, a Highliner, I don't exactly know what it is, but from what I can tell, she's basically crossing gaps, like the spaces between mountain peaks on, on like a high wire. And you're seeing exactly what she does coming at you. It's, it's pretty wild. Um, there's going to be another feature called wildlife. We saw a lot of different things like baby rhinos. Um, we saw a bear. I saw underwater with sharks. So it's going to be some more nature montage videos. And then prehistoric planet immersive. They've showed us this demo before. I didn't get a jump right back into it where you can interact with a dinosaur and a butterfly, but I'm assuming there's going to be more with that. But those are just the beginning of Apple's immersive video experiences in the sizzle reel. They showed us MLS and they showed us Major League Baseball. These are two properties that Apple is streaming. I've told you before in previous videos, this whole Apple immersive video is 
the fruits of their acquisition of Next VR, which was an immersive video VR platform. But at the time, you know, the resolution, the fidelity wasn't all that. But now with the technology and Apple Vision Pro, you're starting to see this. Like there were NBA games in VR where you could change the camera real time at different angles while the game was going on. I've got to imagine we're going to see similar things like this for the MLS and MLB first because those are the properties that Apple has and then it'll continue to expand. But um, Apple Immersive Video was one of those things that I was so excited about for this headset the first time I used it at WWDC. And it's only what I saw today only reinforces how important this feature is going to be. Think of it with more live sporting events, with wrestling, with uh, even concerts. This is going to be a killer feature and they're just scratching the surface with Apple Immersive Video. So uh, that's really exciting. So again, Apple Immersive Video, I kind of broke off the stats, but just to remind you how good this is, it's shot in 8K. Again, the displays show us 4K. So, you know, that also leads me to believe down the road, we'll be able to down the road as the Apple Vision Pro gets better. I mean, it's already really good, but you know, lighter in weight, higher fidelity, it's still retaining 8K video fidelity. It's shot in 3D. 180 degree view so what does that mean like it pretty much comes up to your peripherals the entire visual image and recorded with spatial audio it is just so amazing now apple themselves um, has not made any type of public statement about the field of view that we can actually see because when you're looking at apple vision pro it's you're you know you're wearing a headset so it's as if you're seeing like through here, you still see a good amount. I didn't feel like it's cramped or restricted, but it's still, you know, you still have to move around the area. Um, to me, there is no official statement yet, but to me, it, it's pretty similar to what we have on PSVR 2 and with MetaQuest 3, which is 110 degree field of view wide. And then I think typically theirs are around 98 or 100 degrees vertical. It feels pretty similar to that, but until we know officially what it is, we will find out but what i'm trying to tell you is it's not less it might even be more but from my estimation of using all these devices it feels pretty similar on par with that type of field of view so we'll find out now if we're talking about what the apple vision pro displays to us it's going to be 4k to each eye 90 hertz refresh rate with hdr support and we know this because that technical data was released at wwdc and made public the interesting thing though is that when it's displaying 24 frames per second, 2D video, it's gonna be showing it at 96 hertz refresh rate, and that's just because 24 multiplies into 96 really cleanly, and what that allows for is basically you're, when you're doing playback, it displays at a constant rate, so you're not getting any drop frames or lagging, so that's purely um, visually, it looks better that way, so that's why it just ticks up to 96 hertz specifically for 2D video at 24 frames per second. Okay, Apple had to show me one last thing, right? One really killer thing at the end, and this was eyesight in action. And eyesight is where when you're wearing the Apple Vision Pro, someone on the outside can see, you, you can make eye contact with them. So there's still like this human connection. Now to initially do this, we've seen developer videos that were released, setup videos of the Apple Vision Pro where you hold the device in front of you, it basically scans your face, you turn it in multiple directions, you also, make some expressions that it captures. So one was like a closed mouth smile, an open mouth smile. I think it was like raising your eyebrows, closing your eyes. And it basically builds this digital persona or digital avatar, really like unique face with your properties that is used in FaceTime videos. But what it's also used for is your is that eyesight feature. And so I saw for the first time, uh, someone from Apple was wearing the Apple Vision Pro. And what I found really interesting is, it is honestly exactly the way that they have presented it in the video. So when you've seen it in any of these clips, you notice it kind of has um kind of has like a smoky haze to it. So it's not crystal clear, bright. I think part of that is to give you this feeling that yes, someone is wearing a headset. So it kind of has that smoky tint on it, which allows you to see the detail of the expressions, but it's not like super bright 4K CR. It, it, it's like it's muted by the mask. And I think that also helps give it maybe a more sense of someone's wearing the goggles and it does feel more real. Even the area that displays your eye, the eyesight, it's exactly what they show in the, on the website and demos. It's not the full thing. It's, it's kind of a limited, like if I looked at it, maybe you get about an 
maybe even like something like an inch of space from the black edge of that visor area to what you can actually see. So it's not a lot, but it was insane because I learned a few nuances about it. One thing is obviously if I'm staring at you and I'm not looking at any material, any content, um, it, you can see the headset clearly, but here's where it gets interesting. Let's say I'm spatial, I'm doing spatial computing and I have some windows around me. If I'm looking at like a, a web browser or something, there will be like this reflection that shows on the um, Apple Vision Pro. Um, I'm not sure if it's coded to like the specific color of the app, but they said they were looking at something like Disney Plus and there was kind of like a little bit of a blue tint, but I could still kind of see their eyes. And so what that is telling the users like, oh, they're looking at an app. There's like this ref almost like a reflection of the app in, in the eyesight um, area. And then when they look at me in turn, it, it's that clean smoky look. I'm like, okay, that's kind of crazy. But then let's say someone's like in an environment, they're watching a movie that the promo stuff that we see where it's kind of purpley blue and glowy, that's going to literally cover the entire uh, front of the Apple Vision Pro. But much like there's a feature where if I'm wearing the headset and I turn and I gaze at someone, it kind of slowly reveals the person that I can see them. Similar to that, if I'm watching a movie and I'm super immersed in content and then I turn to my left and I see someone, then it kind of like the, the color haze slowly fades out and then I see their face. So that gaze works whether you're in the Apple Vision Pro or when you're someone looking at someone on the outside, it does eventually reveal their eyes. But it was crazy stuff where I asked the person, I'm like, how, blink three times for how many fingers I'm seeing. They blink three times. I asked them to smile. I asked them to make a straight face and it captures all the nuance. It's, it's eerie, but it's crazy because there's definitely a level of human connection of someone wearing the, the headset. Yes, they're wearing Apple Vision Pro, I get that, but it's actually, it's, it's creepy cool because we've never experienced this before. Maybe it becomes more normal, but it was kind of fascinating. It was a real-time responsiveness because remember, there are cameras inside the headset that are looking at our eye movements and how where we're looking and how we're looking. So it's showing that and projecting it out to a person outside of the headset. Like it is a true one-to-one -one representation. I believe there's something like a 12 millisecond lag, which is like eight times the speed of us blinking of you know the responsiveness of using the headset. And it's fascinating eyesight. <laughs> Definitely encourages more of a human connection. I don't know if I'm I'm gonna really be doing it, but it kind of blew my mind a little bit. But there you go. I mean, I've list I've talked a whole lot about my experiences. I'm just trying to document every single thing that I've experienced with the Apple Vision Pro, bring you new information. We know that it's going on for pre-sale this Friday, January 19th at 5 a.m. Pacific time, 8 a.m. Eastern time. One thing to mention is you will need to either order a uh, pre-order it with your iPhone or your iPad because you're gonna actually do a face scan in the very beginning so that it can uh, match you with the proper uh, light seal and light seal pad. Uh, those that's a, that's a requirement to pre-order this. So it's gonna be very personalized. Uh, we don't know if you'll be able to order additional light seals of different sizes for maybe family relatives. I'm assuming you will be, but at least pre-order we know this Friday, January 19th, starts at $3,499. Um, there will also, it will come with the solo knit band, which is on the back, the dual loop band, which is over the top. It'll come with one battery. If I recall right, I don't think we've seen any news if they will be selling additional batteries extra yet. It might be available on pre-sale. Also, just from a content standpoint, 150 3D movies on launch, 3D movies on launch, you can have those immersive, four immersive video experiences that we talked about, um, Alicia Keys, The Adventure, Wildlife, and then uh, was it Prehistoric Life Immersion? That's what it was called, immersive? So we have, if I got it wrong, I got it wrong. There's so much in my head right now. Um, but starting at $3,499, 250 gigs of storage, gotta assume that using the iCloud storage is gonna be a part of this. Um, the other thing that people have been asking me, quick thing, things are flying my head, spatial video that you record um, with your phone, right now, they have not said anything about being able to edit or create a spatial video you know, in something like iMovie. So if I wanted to make a spatial video review of the Apple Vision Pro, 
I can't right now. You can only trim the front and the back edge. And another thing I forgot about, just the visor to mention, is with EyeSight, when you take a, a photo snap with this, there's a button here to record video, you hold it down or to snap it for a spatial photo, it, it fl there's like this white flash that goes across the, the uh, EyeSight area, so it's an indicator that you took a picture. So, man, my brain is mush, but you get it. This is the most exciting piece of tech coming in 2024, quite honestly. It's the most fascinating. I still can't say if it's worth it yet for me to say, wholeheartedly spend $3,499. I still don't know how long I can wear it where it really becomes uncomfortable. I don't know if I can get through a movie with it, but there is nothing out there like it on planet Earth and it is still um, just incredible what it can do and really more. This is a product that is gonna evolve and grow and do so many more things. It has an M2 in it. There's so much headroom for what it's gonna be capable of and you know, I'm just here for the journey. So thanks for sticking with me. Uh, whenever I get my hands on it, make sure to come back to the channel because there will be plenty more videos, whatever they are. Shoot, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just telling you what I know. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I know it was long, but I hope I gave you a lot of information that you just haven't heard anywhere else. So until next time, take care, peace, and love.